Hey, what's going on everybody? It's me, Mark Robertson, back in today. And I hope you guys are all enjoying March Madness so far. Uh, I've been seeing little tips and pieces. I haven't been really focused on the games, but I've been more focused on like how like how each player that's in the higher part of the, the upcoming draft has been looking. So yeah, um, which comes to what we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to be talking about... Uh, Someone asked me on Twitter for me to go over the Kings swap, uh, the situations that go along with how the Kings, some of the Kings picks will be, could be swapped or could, they could lose their pick or they could gain a pick. Different situations that can e easily affect the Kings in different manners, uh, different manners in the 2017 NBA draft. And then the second part of this video will be me giving my uh, giving the update on where the Kings are in the draft, in the draft right now, and who I think my top ten for the upcoming draft is gonna look like. So yeah, let's get to it. So first off, the Kings would the first pick I'm gonna talk about is the most recent one that we gained from the Demarcus Cousins trade. Uh, the top three pick from the Pelicans, but you have that but in there because it is a protected pick. If the Pelicans end up landing in the top, uh, if they end up landing in the top, uh, what's it called? In the top three, then they get to keep their pick until next year in 2018 when the pick becomes unprotected and then we get it doesn't matter wherever it lands in the draft um but obviously it's better for the kings this year if they can at least keep them within the top 10 uh they did as of tonight so as of the tonight is the 17th so as of tonight uh they did win three straight but they're still uh, projected to be 8th in the draft. So they're still top 10. I don't think they're going to go much farther than that because they still have a pretty hard schedule of teams to face. And the funny part is this is another win that the Pelicans got that DeMarcus Cousins didn't even play because tonight he was out with some right rib bruise or, some, or contusion and then had something wrong with his knee. So... Very interesting. And it was very interesting how they were able to beat the Rockets without Cousins. That's interesting to me. But that's not what we're talking about today. So yeah, we could the Kings could end up losing that pick if the Pelicans land in the top three, which there's a really low percentage chance right now with them being eighth that they're going to land in the top three. So there's still a chance, but it's really low. Um, and then the next one is if... The um, if the Kings go outside of the top ten, the uh the Bulls get our get the Kings' pick. So if they go below, if they go eleven through eleven through thirty, then the the Bulls will end up getting the pick, which is annoying. But at the same time, it ends like the whole thing where they would have gotten it next year anyways. So if they get it, if they ended up getting it this year, then it's it's goes back and forth of how it looks in the future and stuff like that. But obviously we would want those two picks because it's going to look a lot better for the Kings. Um, and then the third, this is more of the actual swap portion. And the swap, basically when a swap comes into play, because you have, there's, there's three different types of picks. There's either a protected pick, an unprotected pick, or a swappable pick. The unprotected one is the one where obviously if it lands in this portion, then... If it lands through 1 through 10, then it's unprotected for some picks, where if it lands through 11 through 30, then it's un then it's unprotected. Um, and then protected is like the whole draft. 1 through 30, uh, 31 through 60 is all fair play, per se. Uh, and then swappable is either it's... Either the two teams agreed upon it's either 
if a team is higher than a certain team, the, sw the picks get swapped. So, say, in this situation, if the Sixers end up getting a lower pick than the Kings, they end up swapping the Kings. So, if the Kings get a... If the Kings somehow pull out a second pick and the Sixers land in the fifth, we would get the fifth pick. We end up getting the fifth pick, which is kind of annoying in the sense of that couldn't that wouldn't have happened if certain aspects of that draft for Stauskas, JT and uh and Landry wouldn't would have happened a different different way, but it's whatever. We would still end up in the top 10. But Best chance, I think, best chance is somehow the... I hope, if it was really good for the Kings this year, if they if, if the NBA was like, okay, the Kings got rid of DeMarcus, they got rid of Matt Barnes, they're trying to fix everything, they have a new arena, their fans are behind them, they're trying to get a possible soccer team going... And they got a whole bunch of good rookies. They got Scowl, who had that monstrous game about against the Suns. Like, wow. Like, did we just trade one All-Star and get another? Um, which we didn't actually trade for him. And Well, technically we traded for him earlier on when we traded Marquise Chris, who still scored 17, but on a lot less terrible shooting. Scowl looked so good, like perspective i play nba 2k to go along with like that's my favorite video game to play right now um because you know i still play video games um but it's sports games so it's all good um in the like ultimate team my team mode they did re they released like this uh moments scowl card that has amazing stats and it's going for like ten thousand mt and i'm like every time i try to bid for it i'm like oh really Really, someone else gets it at like the last two seconds, but it's it's, it's all good. I'll get it sometime another time. Um, and then the he had a monster game, so I think he's gonna. Like I said, I thought he was gonna be a twenty to twenty five and ten guy, and what did he do? Thirty two and eleven on fifteen shots, but twenty one in the fourth. What? If it was that he was playing more, if he had played more minutes throughout the year, he would be in the rookie of the year uh, conversation. To be fair, Joel Embiid played thirty-two games or thirty-three games, and he's still the number one rookie. I, th I think that's, I think that's just, in my opinion, that should never happen. Like a rookie of the year should be, should be someone that came out of this draft class. Um, came out of this draft class and played the same year. Because Joel Embiid came out, what, two... He came out Andrew Wiggins, so that was two years ago. So in 14, he came out of 2014's draft and didn't step on until after three off-seasons. Three off-seasons worth of NBA training. A lot of these rookies had not had that kind of training before. That's not fair. He came in this league being a really good big man that was projected to be a really good big man. So, in my opinion, he does not deserve it. Um, but hey, right now, Scal is the only, only drafted 2016 NBA draft class player to have a 30-plus game. Because... Uh, Joel doesn't count, and uh, Yogi Ferrell does not count. Yogi Ferrell went undrafted. That's not that's not counting as coming out. Yes, that was cool that he had that game, and that's really cool that he's doing great in Dallas. But he didn't come out of this draft class, that's for sure. Who did? Scalabissier. Kings fans, watch out for Scal. He is going to be fantastic in the offseason he just has to add that 25 pounds 25 pounds that's it that's all he needs 25 pounds that's it and then so yeah that's that's how the uh the swaps and the um the like the different losses and picks will go 
Now I'm going to talk about my uh, uh, draft board. So currently, this is this this is the top ten position wise for each of the. Um, this is the top ten position wise for the uh, the lottery so far, just based on uh, season records. So first would be Celtics get their or Celtics via Nets. La uh, Lakers number two, Suns number three, Magic number four, Sixers number five, which I'm really hoping that they stay down in wins because they're only two wins away from being tied for wins with the Kings. So we need we need them to stay under. So that's why that's why people need to understand that even though it looks even though we're quote unquote tanking, they still the Kings still need to pick up valuable wins that will keep them from falling underneath the Sixers. Even if the Sixers were six and we were five, that's still that's still losing one position that we could get a future player that would be fantastic for the Kings. And then Knicks have lost like three straight, so they dropped to six. Worse, uh, the Kings have seventh. Current that would be. So the eighth would be Kings via Pelicans, and because if they're in the top, uh, top not in the top three, then we don't then we don't have to give them their pick back, and then T Wolves are nine, and Dallas currently has let so they've lost one straight. The Hornets have lost three straight, so the Hornets have moved up to number ten. So that's where that is right now. Um. And then this is how this is my draft board. Everybody else has different. People have different draft boards all the time, but this is mine. Uh, number one, uh, Markel Fultz will go number one, which I don't think the Celtics really need a point guard, but obviously they'll try to play him with Isaiah. Uh, number two will be Lonzo. Lonzo will probably take over as leading point guard instead of Russell. Russell will probably be their six man. Uh, number three, Josh Jackson. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they really need another small forward because they have Warren, but I guess Warren can move to the power forward position and Chris can play center, I guess. Uh, and then Jason Tatum's moved up to number four for the Magic. Uh, obviously they need a small forward because Gordon plays more of the four. Um, Sixers would get, Mon would get Monk. Uh... Yes, they do have pretty, pretty okay, okay looking, uh, shooting guards, but they need that one solid shooting guard. Um, and then, mile, uh, Miles Bridges would go number nine because he's gone up as of late from Michigan. And then number ten would be Robert Williams at number ten. So yeah, that's my draft board. Um. And now for my tomorrow's pick of the day for DraftKings. Um, I'm choosing Damian Lillard, Rudy Gobert, and Nikola Jokic. Or Jokic? Jokic? I think. I always have the hardest time pronouncing that guy's name, but he's phenomenal. He always gets those triple doubles easily and for the Nuggets, so yeah. And they're probably, I'm going to predict, my prediction, the Nuggets are going to get the 8th seed, and they're going to play a pretty good series against the Warriors. So, Warriors or Spurs, we don't know. It could be either or, but yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to leave comments down below, uh, and I'll hit you up with an assist when I can. Um, and then, also leave ideas down in the comments for what you want for me to uh, research for uh, Kings or basketball wise, and then I'll uh, I'll check back in with you guys in a new, and then a, bleh, check back in with you guys in another video, and then uh, don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe for more basketball uh, weekly content, and I will uh, catch you all later, hoop fans.